Hi everyone, so today I'm going to demonstrate a very simple yet powerful technique in Olympiad inequalities and that is called as Ravi substitution. So this is another thing that you can have in your problem solving toolkit. And if you do this, you know, a lot of these Olympiad inequalities, they can just reduce down to very, very simple terms. So yeah, let's see how this works. So this is the problem number five from the Asia Pacific Math Olympiad in the year 1996. And this is one of the most standard uses of Ravi substitution, one of the best uses in fact. And in this video, we're going to see about Ravi substitution. We're going to talk about symmetry. The, the base idea of Ravi substitution is to convert the given inequality into something a little bit more symmetric, right? Because symmetric inequalities are usually easier to deal with. And then of course we have book sessions for math Olympiads and at the end, a similar but challenging problem. This video is sponsored by Chinta.com. Since 2010, Chinta has trained thousands of students from all around the world in mathematical Olympiads, physics Olympiads, computer science and informatics Olympiads, ISI CMI entrances and research projects for school and college students. Okay, so they're asking us that let ABC be the lens of the size of a triangle and then we need to prove that it satisfies this given inequality, right? But ABC are basically sides of a triangle, right? And so any general triangle, the size of any general triangle will satisfy this given inequality. That's what we need to prove. So let me just tell you about what this Ravi substitution is, right? Ravi substitution. Now, whenever we have A, B, C as the size of a triangle, there is a particular substitution that you can use, right? I can substitute A with X plus Y, B with Y plus Z, and C with Z plus X. And when I do that, this thing is called as Ravi substitution. And like I said before, the core idea is this for it to be transformed into a symmetric uh, inequality, which we'll see how it becomes, right? But when I make this substitution, this is something that we call as Ravi substitution. Now, now, if it is a triangle, then it needs to satisfy one property, which is sum of any two sides is greater than the third side, right? A plus B greater than C, B plus C greater than A and C plus A greater than B. It needs to satisfy this. And here it's very easy to see that uh, such a thing is satisfied with a substitution. So for example, if I take a plus b greater than c, I can see that x plus y, which is a, plus y plus z, which is b, is greater than c, which is z plus x. A couple of terms will cancel out. So we get that 2y is greater than 0, which is obviously true, right? Because we are taking positive quantities. So this substitution that we had done is true. You know, all these quantities are non-zero effectively. Okay, great. So this substitution basically valid. Right? The, it's not a degenerate triangle is not being formed. So we are still very much within the realms of uh, the geometric interpretation of this. Okay, great. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use this substitution and plug it into our original inequality. And let's just see what we get, right? So when you just make the substitution, you will obtain root 2x plus root 2y plus root 2z is less than or equal to root x plus y plus root y plus z plus root z plus x which is great because now you kind of get the idea that's becoming a little bit easier right it's becoming a little bit more symmetric now what do we do we square both terms and the sign of the inequality will be the same because you know positive quantities on both sides so you can just square it without without worrying and when you square it you'll get 2x plus 2y plus 2z plus 4 root xy plus 4 root yz plus 4 root xz will be less than or equal to 2x plus 2y plus 2z plus 2 root x plus y y plus z plus 2 root y plus z times z plus x plus 2 root x plus z times x plus y. So right, I just squared both terms. And you can very conveniently see that this and this gets cancelled out. And after that, if I divide by 2 on both sides, I'll get 2 root xy plus root yz plus root xz. I took two common basically. So that will be less than or equal to square root of x plus y, y plus z, root y plus z times z plus x. And then obviously we have square root of x plus z times x plus y. Right? 
So this is essentially the inequality that we have reduced it down to. And this is obviously a little easier to prove because now you see it's symmetric, right? It is something which is kind of easier to deal with, I would say. There's some sort of like cyclic structure being formed over here, if that makes sense. So um, what I'm now going to do is I'm just going to rewrite this. Right? I'm going to rewrite this into something that will be a little bit easier to see. All I'm doing is just rewriting this. Okay, so just uh, see how I do this. So I'll just write square root of xy plus square root of xz plus square root of xy plus square root of yz plus square root of yz plus square root of xz. So basically, this is the left hand side, right? I just kind of like opened it up and then I wrote it like this. So if you see, we have two root xy, we have two root xz and then you have two root yz. So basically everything is perfect, right? There are no issues with this. It's basically the same thing that I've written up top. And maybe just let's just call this equation number one. So this is less than or equal to this entire thing is less than or equal to what we have on the right hand side. And again, the right hand side, I'm going to write it like this. This is square root of x plus y times x plus c plus square root of x plus y, y plus z plus square root of y plus z times x plus z. You notice what I'm doing over here. Here we have root x, y. So here we have x plus y, here we have x, z, so here x plus z, x, y, again x plus y, y, z, y plus z, y, z, y plus z, and x, z is x plus z. So this is something I'm just doing. I'm just rewriting what we have in equation number one. This is effectively equation number one. Now, do you actually notice something? There is some kind of cyclic symmetry over here. So basically, if I just consider this, if I just prove that this is less than or equal to this, then that would necessarily imply that this is less than or equal to this, which would also necessarily imply that this is less than or equal to this because of symmetry, right? If I somehow prove that the equation is symmetric, right? So it does not matter, right? So what I'm saying is because of the cyclic structure or because of the cyclic symmetry, so because of the cyclic structure, of the inequality, it is sufficient to prove or it is enough to prove enough to prove any one of these, right? So for example, root xy plus root xz is less than or equal to root x plus y times x plus z. What will happen is if this is true, if this is true, again, I'm making an assertion. If this is true, then by if this is true, what I've taken then by symmetry, this will also be true. And by symmetry, this will also be true. It's a very cyclic structure, right? Using the same idea, you can prove the second and third one also. And then add all the three up and then you'll get this equation number one. Right? Now that's perfect. Now how do we prove this? It's actually very simple. You just square both sides. Again, both of these left-hand side and right-hand side are positive. So you can just square them without worrying. So you'll get xy plus xz plus 2 root x square yz will be less than or equal to the square and just open it up. So you'll get x square plus xz plus xy plus yz. A couple of things cancel out xy and xz, right? So we have 2 square root of x square yz is less than or equal to x square plus yz. If you're wondering how this can be proved, it is very trivial by amgm, right? Amgm. So what does AMGM say for any two numbers, positive numbers, A plus B? A plus B by two is greater than or equal to root AB. If I take A is equal to X square and B is equal to YZ like we have over here, I'll get X square plus YZ by two is greater than or equal to square root of X square YZ or equivalently twice of square root of X square YZ is less than or equal to X square plus YZ, which is what we have over here, right? So I can write it that this is true by AM, GM. Now, now comes the major part. Because this is true by AM, GM, what does that mean? That means that this is also true, right? The idea was to prove this. And because this is true by symmetry, all of these three terms will be true. So this will be true, this will be true, this will be true. Just add them up and the entire equation one is true, right? So by symmetry, equation one or inequality one, whatever you call it, holds. Right? It holds for all numbers x, y, z. 
and because equation number one holds, what was equation number one? Equation number one was basically original inequality plus Ravi substitution, right? So because equation one is true, that means our original equation is also true, and hence we have proven this inequality. So this is actually the result that holds for all, all triangles, all sides of the triangle. It's a very nice inequality. And again, the idea was to use the Ravi substitution and form a sort of a symmetric approach so that we could easily apply some standard inequalities as AMGM or Cauchy Schwartz or whatever and simplify that. So yeah, hope you learned something from that. Okay, moving on to certain book suggestions of senior math Olympiads. I am a compendium, polynomials by Barbeu, elementary number theory by Sierpinski, graph theory by Harari, combinatorix by Brualdi, secrets and inequalities and functional equations and how to solve them by Christopher G. Small. Okay, so at the end we have a similar but challenging problem. And again, we have XYZ sides of a triangle, so you can without worrying use the Ravi substitution. And I want you to prove that the cyclic sum, the cyclic sum of X squared times Y minus C will be less than XYZ, right? And keep in mind that this is a cyclic sum, not symmetric. So maybe try it out. And if you're able to solve it, let me know. Until then, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much and bye-bye. The programs are designed for students who are passionate about mathematics. And they are personalized with one-on-one -on -one training, individual evaluation, and remedial sessions. The reason Chinta students are successful over the last 10 years because they are taught by mathematicians and real Olympiads from leading universities in India, United States and Europe. Some of our students come back to teach at Chinta from Oxford, Cambridge, Harvard, MIT, UCLA, ISI, CMI, IITs, TIFR and IISC. For more information, visit Chinta.com.